Hey, this is George from Disciples of Verity, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. I had to take over, hit and record because Chris was forgetting all the time and we were missing every freaking interview. Oh, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> see? It's like you guys were in a metal band. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Somebody's got to forget something or it's not metal. Right. <laughs> Chris, you want to my snare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see if I can turn this up a little bit. Got some classical music playing in the background for the cats. Nice. Oh, nice. Alexa, stop. <laughs> All right, here we go. Yes. <laughs> Alexa's so obedient. Yeah, she is. You know. yeah. Anyway. The only woman you're going to get that kind of response out of. You know? <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so how are you doing, man? You doing all right? Uh, all right, yeah, I'm just getting some dirty looks over there for me. Yeah. Uh, there's gonna be shit flying across the room at you here in a second. <laughs> like, what? <the> thing? <laughs> anyway, Chris, you want to take the lead? No, go ahead, Bruce. So, uh, this is your, uh, I guess, the continuation of Disciples of Verity. You had some stuff out just before the pandemic, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we we released some singles. We really never released a full record yet. Right. Um, I wouldn't say before the pandemic, although, yes, I guess there was one single that was done before the pandemic. I believe that was worthy. And uh, let's let's just uh, clarify what's before the pandemic. You yeah, know? I guess. I guess 2019, right? Right. Yeah. So I think we released one. Oh God, I can't even remember. I feel like, you know, as everybody that, you know, we lost an entire year here. So it's, uh, you know, timelines are, are, are a little rough the past year and a half, you know, nice. but um, I want to say it was like November ish. I think of 19, we released worthy. Um, that one featured Jeff Loomis on guitar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I mean, that was before that. And then now we've released what five other singles or right. across the I mean, we do have plans on releasing a full record. Um, I think either sometime in Jan- uh, December or January, first week of January. I don't think oh, any okay. week later than the first week of January. And, you know, what? we put two new tracks on it. So it's kind of like a re-release or a, you know, uh, let's say a bonus release. You know, we did have like a CD release party for like hard copies and stuff like that, which mm-hmm. were eight tracks on it. So, I mean, people who came to the live shows... Look, you know, let's face it, guys. I mean, everything's been so screwed up, you know. Um, you want to release music. You want to give it to everybody, you know. Uh, unfortunately, we came out in a time with, with, you know, with all these, you know, travesties going on, you know, civil unrest and and pandemic and, and uh, you know, the presidency. And, like, you know, <laughs> let's not fucking lie. It's a shit show, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. So um, that being said, you know, it's really huff, tough to get anybody to pay attention to music. Nobody's paying attention to music. Right. You know? I mean, you want to look at your news feed, but it ain't for music. I could tell you that. Yeah. You, know, uh, you want to you look at uh, the headlines and all the videos, but, you know, nobody's, you know, looking at music or listening to that. So real shit time for us to be coming out. Um, it seems to be the story of my life, but, you know, I guess I'll <laughs> <laughs> So how did how did you guys end up coming together as a band? Well, you know what? Uh, so, you know, the, I, I'm the catalyst for it all. Uh, on uh, you know, those guys will curse me out and say that it's my <laughs> fault, <laughs> but you know, they do love it. Um, I think so. Um, you know, I, I started writing some music. Uh, you know, I had. I had really nothing planned for a band wise. I was just kind of doing it on my own at this point. You know what I mean? Um, being a disgruntled band member and in, in a few other bands. Um, so I, uh, I put some music together and Corey and I were in, in uh, Nam in January. Uh, so the reason why I state what month it would be in Nam is because it was snowed out over here. We got stuck in an Airbnb for, you know, quite a few days after our flights were originally supposed to be scheduled. Right. Uh, so, you know, we got to spend some quality time to, um, 
take this en- endeavor on. At first, it was just supposed to be one song, you know. I was like, hey, Corey, would you mind singing on one song? And he, uh, he was like, hell yeah. He loved it. And so he just kept coming back, man. I don't know why he kept coming back, but I <laughs> music for music. He just kept coming back. So, uh, you know, we turned it into a record and then it was like, hey, you know what? Let's turn this into a band. And then, you know, uh, you know, we started recruiting some players early on when some stuff was being uh, written, you know, and uh, Corey Pierce of God Forbid was one of them. Um, I had worked with him on um, a previous record with my other band, Negative Sky, which he was a co-producer on. So, um you know, naturally, I, I, I uh, him and I, you know, hit it off as, as the rhythm section there, you know, um, me working with him in the studio and, 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 you know, it just was a natural progression, you know, that uh, him and I did it. And then he came in and started writing some songs with me and, you know, helped me out, you know, uh, arrange some things. And, uh, you know, it's just taken off after there, after that, you know, and now with uh I guess it's a viable band at this point. So we're going to continue on continuing on. You know, one thing that I find super cool is that the music has almost no, like, um, I don't know how to say this. It doesn't feel like it's made by people that used to play music in the eighties. It feels like it's made by people that are like 18, 19, 20 years old. Yeah. Do Do you know what I mean by that? Sure. I mean, uh, look, it w- it's definitely done on purpose, right? Yeah. Uh, I think I gravitate more towards a lot of newer music. You know, as a songwriter, I wrote, you know, a great portion of this music, probably 90% of it, I would say. So um, I gravitate towards a lot of newer bands, you know, and I wanted to put something together that, you know, because I feel like there's some things lacking in some newer bands, you know, with this type of music. Um, you know, it's, it's in a extended range, seven string drop G sharp, uh, which is, you know, you'll hear a lot of extended range guitars these days, obviously. Um, so, I mean, I felt like, um, there's a lot of things lacking in some singers and, and, and musicality today. And that's, you know, and I don't want to say this to sound like a jerk because, you know, everybody has talent in what they're doing in that specific way. But, you know, like a lot of the, uh, it's more geared towards, and this was my view and my view only, and my opinion and my opinion only, obviously. Um, so my intention was to write more of a deathcore sounding music, you know, and put a singer over it that sings and doesn't scream, but maybe sings, uh, you know, completely different than that genre, you right. know. So um, I wanted to put a puzzle together, uh, per se, um, to be different, um, but have some of those same, um, you know, musicality uh, aspects that they bring into, like, say, a death core or like, you know, like bands like Mashuga and Mm -hmm. bands like, um, you know, I don't know, uh, Fit for a King, uh, you know, uh, fit for an autopsy. We'll just put all the fits in there. Right. Maybe, <laughs> Even maybe, a little bit of white chapel, maybe, maybe some white chapel in there too. Yes. Correct. So I wanted to put that type of music or that kind of musicality where it, you know, it is a little genty. It is, uh, you know, time signatures are different and stuff like that. And I wanted to make it interesting musically in that aspect with that, you know, deeper tone. And, you know, I just pictured, Corey fitting over this right like so so well and and he has you know and then you bring you know right which uh, yeah talent would right but then you bring Corey Pearson who's a old friend of mine he's he's actually one of the first ones did my cooking show 11 years ago or something but um you bring him in from god forbid and he brings a, a certain standard of drumming as well to the table and it makes it something quite special absolutely the guy's like uh you know he's just he's like a walking um metronome you know and his timing is impeccable and uh he's got some uh you know it's kind of brings a little bit of that thrash style and that you know god forbid thrash style to it which uh 
<clears throat> you know, all aspects, you know, I don't come from that background either of thrash. Um, so I feel like all three together really, um, lend well to one another, you know, in a, in a, you know, maybe a style of tone, I, which I, you know, again, I'm not a critic, so I, right. I'm not going to tell you what I, style. I think it definitely separates it from everything else for sure. Because of that. My, my complete intention, yeah, you know, but whether it translates that way, it's, it's not really up to me. You know, I don't right. want to say, I don't want to put labels on things because, you know, I think once, once you start doing that, you know, um, you may pigeonhole yourself into something. And I hate putting, you know, when they ask me, you know, well, what's your music like? Or, you know, what is, what is your band? What do you think you guys sound like? It's like uh, I really don't know. That's not up to me. It's up to you. Right. <laughs> yeah, we sound like heavy metal <laughs> <laughs> with killer musicians. <laughs> it's right. a metal, hard rock, metal style, gen, you know, you can say whatever you want about it. You know, um, I, I, I wanted to make sure that we had solos in there and, and talented solos. And, you know, we got some talented players on the record. You know, um, he's got Phil Demo from Machine Head, or you know, Violence now and ex Machine Head, and uh, we got Tara McLeod from from Kitty, ex Kitty, and um, you know, Morgan Rose plays a track on there from from Seven Dust, and um, you know, Joe Guerreri, uh, who's like a solo guy from Ernie Ball, you know, um, and my old guitar player JJ, who plays on it from Negative Sky, um, all complete you know, awesome players. And then, you know, Zach, uh, our guitar player, Zach Morano now here, uh, he's a super talented guy too. So, um, this, you know, I wanted to keep that aspect too, because I feel like, you know, some of those, genre, you know, people too, they, they like, you know, to me, solos are, are, are a very important part of, of a song. You know? I agree. Um, you know, it, it not only shows talent, but, you know, the musicality and the break and, you know, bringing to you to a bridge that brings you to a, a separate place. You know, if I'm yeah. going off uh, off subject here, let me know. But, no, uh, no. Go ahead, Bruce. I was going to say, I agree with you on the solo thing. And I missed that from, you know, the 80s or my era, whatever. And I missed that. But. Also, I think it got to the point where it was almost like instrumental masturbation where it got too long, right? So you have to figure out a spot that is right. Agreed. You don't, you don't want to hear somebody showing off their Berkeley skills all day long in one song. A hundred percent. I mean, I uh, I feel like some bands do that. And I won't name bands because no, no, no. You know, get mad at me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, bands do that. I mean, sometimes I find myself, Bruce, uh, I find myself writing a five and to six minute song. And then I sit back and I go, you know what? I got to just trim the fat down. This is just way too long. You know, right. but even I don't want to say, you know, okay, I got to, you know, stick to the Billy Joel. Let's cut it down to three Oh five, you know, but, um, and I don't, you know, uh, so, but I do try to, to, uh, cut fat, you know right. what I mean? Too long because, you know, people get bored, man, you know, <laughs> That's Somebody nowadays. like a minute and a half. Yeah. What was, yeah. What was that O Town Road that became Super Gold? What was that a minute and thirty five seconds or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. not, like, I remember cool. seeing Napalm Death on seventy thousand tons of metal, and he was like, "We're gonna play our longest song," and it was like five seconds long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Man, those guys were hilarious. Um, you know who was good for that? Was a, what was that? Uh, S O D or M O D? Oh they yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I have a question. You guys are all such skilled musicians. Like you're tenured, you're you've all toured, you've all like you know what you're doing. So when you're prepping for a show, how much time goes into rehearsal together as opposed to just preparing for the show at home? Ooh. Now this is a trick question here because if I answer it wrong, it could sound wrong. Oh. You see, if I tell you we don't really rehearse, then we sound like we're lazy. No, but I don't no, think no. so. Us, and it sounds like we're not too good. No, I think it sounds like you've got you've achieved a certain level of <laughs> skill, right, and experience. Oh yeah, true. Um, see, I want to say everything's different. Like, um, you know, the band. I would, uh, I would say we try to get a, together a little bit more. You know, I mean, uh, we just played a couple dates, and you know, let's say. 
You know, most important is 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 that you. I want to say that we're off from the school now of days because we do have um, travel between us. You know, we're not all close to one another. You yeah. know, we're not all in twenty minutes or you know, but to the same high school and we could go to the local thing. So, you know, Corey's got to drive two hours. You know, the other Corey's probably an hour and a half away. You know, he's got to take a couple trains and. You know, Mark is way down South Jersey. He's an hour away from me. You know what I'm saying? So we're yeah. all, you know, probably an hour and a half to two hours away from getting together. Um, so that being said, I think we're all of the school at this point that practices for home and rehearsal is for when you're doing something. Yes. So if you have to rehearse, that means you're going to have a show or a string of shows or a tour coming up, right? Right. Yeah, Absolutely. So I, I want to say that we don't rehearse three days a week, but we may do five rehearsals before a show or three rehearsals before a show, at yeah. least, you know, before the show. And yeah. then, you know, once you get that first one under your belt in a tour, you know, that, you know, you're working out the bugs, you know, by the third one, you got it all handled, you know, I would yeah. say. Well, but, that, you know, that, that was kind of my question because, um, like, I know a lot of bands, they they were like, why would we rehearse? I already know the song. We just show up and play the song. Correct. Some people right? some people do that. I mean, my old band, Negative Sky, or I don't want to say my old band because I still play with those guys once in a while. Um, we don't rehearse at all. Yeah. You know, if you, we if just, you know the material, why do you have to rehearse? You don't. You, you, you Well, re, like I said, rehearsal is for a show. Yeah, exactly. You know, you, you know, and you may have want to put different aspects into a show than you did on the last show or the last tour. You know, we're going to add some, you know, whatever, some segues here and there. You know what I mean? Our set list is going to be this. We're going to play this one back to back. We're going to put a segue in here. We're going to say these certain things and do these certain things, whatever. So that's rehearsal. You should practice at home and you should have your material completely practiced. At home, by the time you come to rehearsal, you should know it. Be balls Absolutely. On. Right. Yeah. yeah. If you don't, there's bigger issues, right? Yeah, there certainly <laughs> right. is. <laughs> what am I supposed yeah. to play here again? We play in two hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> don't ask me that. <laughs> if you ask me that, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> oh. oh, George. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. Right. That's okay. It was just battery going low there. I should plug it in. What was it like being on the road after being sidelined for so long? I'll tell you what, the first show I played out of, out of the pandemic. Um, wow, man. Uh, it was like such a relief that, cause I really wasn't sure how people were going to react to it and not the music I meant to the pandemic. You know, is everybody going to treat you like, you know, you got cooties and they don't want to touch you or, you know, are, are people going to, you know, be excited about going back to shows again? Right. And you know what the response that I found was that 90 percent of the people were just so happy to get back to, you know, to the music. And yeah. you know, the first couple shows were sold out. So, yeah. it, you know what I mean? Um, so I want to say that I was just so happy to get back on stage you know you know i mean it's it's a depressing thing for everybody i mean yeah. you guys got probably had to deal with some of that on your own oh, you know yeah. um you know you lock yourself in your house and you know uh, you're spending your birthday there and your christmas and your you know vacation yep. you know the stuff <laughs> that you're doing you just don't right. do no you know so i mean i was me i was elated to get back out you know and i, I feel like everybody was and the energy was there you know so yeah, that's how what that a went. feeling. I I you know that must have been an amazing feeling because but also kind of scary at the same time. Like like when you first like got on stage, you must have been a little bit like, Holy shit, this is happening. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like any nerves? I look for me personally, and I can only speak for me, like if I don't get nervous, I'm gonna quit music. Fair enough. You know, it's kind of like, uh, let's say, do you guys go skiing or anything like that? No, but I, 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 I get the thing. I get your analogy. Yeah. You know, just when you're about to jump off the mountain into the water or a bungee jump, you know, you get that 
butter butterfly feeling in your stomach and you, right. you know i gotta have that it makes me feel alive you yeah know? man absolutely if i didn't feel that i would probably wouldn't do it it probably feel like a job right right and then you just do something else correct Probably something well, you can lucrative. make a lot more money, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Wait, you so, mean there's not a there's not millions of dollars in the music business anymore? All right, I'll tell this secretly on your podcast. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you heard it here first. Here first. Yep. Here, here first. There's not millions of dollars in the music business right now. Yeah. yeah. That's At funny. least not in the music where that where it matters. I'll walk out with a stack of cash like this and I walk home with a stack of cash like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah. <You> pay? <laughs> yeah. I saw I saw a meme once. How do you give it how do you make a man lose five thousand dollars? <laughs> You give him five thousand dollars and send him to Guitar Center. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'll definitely make him lose. Yeah, yeah. I, I do like expensive guitars myself. So. <laughs> what are you playing right now? Uh, I'm currently playing Spectre. I yeah. play Spectre pieces. Uh, I'm endorsed by Spectre. Thank you, Spectre. And uh, so you know, I got a couple uh, real expensive Spectre, uh, including a um handcrafted american made uh with um actually the inlays or, or pearl inlays that say disciples of verity on the uh oh, on nice. oh wow really they nice. cost for me which and is just can't thank them enough it's what beautiful. what pick, what pickups do you have in there i use emg x's oh cool so bright and gnarly uh, they are and i also have the dark glass um preamp in it which gives it that growl um oh i love that thing we're familiar with, with oh so you are familiar with the dark glass oh 100 percent. yeah I'm, I'm a recording mix engineer that's what i do oh I, awesome. I i actually use the Nero dsp they have the the dark glass plug-in sure and yeah. then they all they also have the uh why it's they have a bass plug-in and i can't remember the name of it but i use it all the oh. time parallax yep yeah that i go to right there parallax parallel x yep yeah yep love so that. good i love the dsp stuff i've been using them actually so since you're a recording nerd like me because <laughs> <He is. laughs> uh, i am a complete recording nerd um secret ready yeah you hear first I need a single amp on this fucking record oh good. <laughs> that's his thing i love it Neural DSP. Which oh. one were you using? Gratifier? No, I mean, I think there is some of the uh, the Gojira plugin on it. Oh, God, what a plugin. See, I got three of them on there. Uh, what a, What is the uh, the Fortin? Oh, yeah. Uh, I got the Fortin one. And um, so all these companies I'm plugging, I will expect to check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you want my address just dm me uh so yeah so i'm using the parallel extra bass i use the the neural dsp stuff for the guitars um as well all, all it's all neural dsp right yeah so um Man, yeah. Th that gojira plugin for me was like a major step up in amp simulation quality i just couldn't the first time i turned it on i was just like what the hell am i listening to i agree with you i just i i can't agree with you anymore that was a game fucking changer yeah seriously i mean it's got to be for many musicians and many people who use it because i gotta tell you guys that i must have had every single goddamn guitar simulator plug-in that they make on the fucking market yeah and nothing touches that in my opinion no, you know? not not even close. My and amp I'm sim still not getting a check from them. My amp sim list is about <laughs> is about this big. You know, it's like I probably have fifty or sixty different versions of plugins. You know, from amplitude to STL tones to everything. Yep. And the only thing I use is Gojira. That's it. You, you don't need nothing else at this point. No. 
in unless of course uh you know maybe they want to make a plug-in section with my name on it or something <laughs> I feel like this is an infomercial for George. Yeah. <laughs> it should be. Yeah. I'm really not trying to plug all these companies. Yeah. So are you using Pro Tools or what are you using? I use Pro Tools, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I love Pro Tools. Yeah. I uh, you know, here's another funny uh fact, right? So when I started recording this record, before I recorded this record. Uh, because I did record it all too. I haven't. This is the first record I've ever recorded. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Amazing. That's where did you yep. cut the Where did you cut the drums? Uh, we did those in three different locations. Believe it or not, uh, we did them with uh, Eric Rachel in New Jersey, and then we did it at. Uh, this other studio in North Jersey. Gosh, I wish I remembered the name, guy's name. Sorry, guy. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> and then with uh, this other producer, uh, engineer that I work with in South Jersey, Charlie Berezansky, who's uh, who does a lot of the stuff for me. He, he mixes for me. And, um, you know, I've been working with him on a lot of material because I do other stuff too, right? Yeah. And, you know, Charlie's my dude, so um he's at uh, rival sound studios in south jersey nice he's a close friend he's also in that band vexes i don't know if you ever heard of that no, cool not familiar. anything uh, else chris I, no i could go tech talk all day but i'll yes I'll... we could <laughs> <laughs> we heard that all day chris oh my god i'm such a geek like me too, bro. Man, I just went off on plugins over the pandemic because I was like, what else am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. nice. like, you know, me being a fat kid with cake. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for uh, Disciples of Verity? What do you have on the, uh, on the docket? Well, I mean, uh, we might do a couple like small little runs in November, but we're going back out in January. Um, I know we're doing the 14th through the 23rd right now. We have some makeup dates that we had to make up, uh, unfortunately due to some scheduling conflicts with living right. color. So, um, we had to make up a few dates. So that right now is on the docket for, fe uh, January 13th through the 24th or 14th through the 23rd. One of those okay. two. Uh, anyway, we, you know, we're going to play, uh, I think we got to play Saginaw, Michigan and uh, Westland, Michigan and Bradley, Illinois. And we're going to play uh, cold as hell. Right. January in the Midwest. <laughs> Thanks for fucking reminding me. Bro. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, what, off. you know, yeah. it's colder than that. Touring Canada we're, in January. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's, he's got that in February. That is when they show up to the shows with a, with a snowmobile. <laughs> it, those dudes are hardcore up there. <laughs> nice, and they got a cold beer. Like, hey, little hey. cold. Yep. God bless Beer's them. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's Take it, Chris. I, I don't have anything else, man. I really appreciate you taking the time with us today. It it was an honor to chat with you, especially because we got to talk geek talk for a bit. Bruce Absolutely. Bruce usually clamps down on that with me. So. Does he? Or I get up and leave and come back, or you know. Yeah, I don't blame you, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for taking up that kind of valuable time. Thank you, awesome. my friend. I'll share one more thing tech with you. I don't know <laughs> if you I don't know if you used this plugin before. It's the T S E B O D. It's like it's a model of the Boss Bass Distortion pedal. Okay. And it's totally free and it's uh -huh. the best like parallax is great if you really want it grindy, but the yep. boss one gives you that nice overdrive. It's really yeah. good. The BOD one? Yeah, yeah, TSE. It's a free plugin if you just search up oh, TSE. I the TSE plugin. You but do? I don't, I don't have the boss pedal one. You know which one I got? Is the Tube Screamer. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. From TSE. It's I also good. It's what do they call it? The green machine or the green overdrive or some shit like that? I, I can't remember. It's but, the tubes 
one. Yeah, that but if one, that one sounds great, that was actually the first one that I was like dialing in with with a couple of other uh, um, cab sims, you yeah. know, at TSC. All right, I'll check that out though. It's, a, it's a great plug in. I've, I've been getting the best bass tones of my life with that thing. It's so oh, good. I feel the same way with the uh, Parallel X, though. I feel like, I yeah, can't. I feel that but too. A new version of the Parallel X because they just came out with one. Yeah, I, I they kind of had a mess up with that one because it, the first release it screwed yeah. up a bunch of stuff, but they fixed it now and it's it's good. It's really yeah, good. yeah. It's got the tuner on it now, which is to me another game changer. Yeah, <laughs> it's nice. Hey, what an idea! Let's tune. <laughs> it on there, the rest of the plugins do. Yeah. it took me a while to get that one yeah all right man time any longer thank thank you thank so you much for man. taking the time and making it work i appreciate it hey thank you guys appreciate you and Be keep well. us updated with shows and stuff so we can share it whenever uh whenever they happen no doubt all right you man. got it Be well. Right. we'll see you soon you too Thanks. bro take care yeah. bye bye